hello everybody. I am back. ASC2 Entertainment. Can't say I've ever heard of them. I don't know about you guys, but they are quite unfamiliar to me. Human Entertainment, on the other hand. They are quite familiar with me. Oh, Demon Baby! Uh, if any of you have watched my last playthrough, or my playthrough of the first game in the series, you'll automatically recognize this scene just done in 3D. Which is pretty awesome, I gotta say. I, I can't remember her name. I want to say it's Ashley. Clock Tower. Now this is actually the uh, second oh, game mother, in the series. Let's let's watch the opening here. No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. Oh, that sounds so horrible. The trail of terror stretches across Europe from Norway to England. That audio is so muffled. And you can barely hear the voices over the music. One after another, the horrifying murders continue. Oh no! We'll make it through this game of murder alive. Clock Tower. It sounds like he barely has any grasp on English. <laughs> But yes, in case you somehow missed it, we are playing Clock Tower. Let's go ahead and go into pamphlet here and into Clock Tower story. In the mountains of Romstoran, uh, Norway, stands the Burroughs family mansion. This mansion had a large clock tower by which the locals tended their flocks in the surrounding fields. The local people called the mansion the Clock Tower. In 1986, the mistress of the Barrows Mansion gave birth to twins. From the day they were born, however, it was obvious that the twins were not normal and were evil. The twins were given the names Bobby and Dan, who were later to become the murderous scissormen. In 1995, a young girl from the Granite Orphanage, whose parents died when she was quite small, was lured into the Barrows Mansion where she was attacked by a monster wielding a giant pair of scissors. That monster was the grown-up Bobby. She managed to escape from the terrible horrors, destroy the monster, and flee the mansion. For the next year, all of Norway was caught up with a sensationalized Scissorman murder. Although Jennifer thought he was dead, Scissorman has reappeared. Okay, let's see. As you can see, we got plenty of endings again. We got ten of them. Uh, and it looks like there's actually two playable characters, which is rather interesting. So let's go ahead and go into new game here. Prologue, Samuel Barton. <sighs> oh, jeez. Now, I, I actually remember playing this one when I was a little kid. And I had absolutely no idea what I was supposed to do. So, Scissor Man would always kill me. Always kill me. And I, I don't think I ever got past the first level. What are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's like what? Need to remember the murders yet. Helen. Oh, well, hello. What do we have here? We got 3D polygons. That's awesome. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. They look so stiff. Right. His arm is above his shoulder. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes. What is up with that? His arm is clearly above his shoulder there. <laughs> okay, let's examine the bed. The clock tower murders. The mass murder of over 10 victims in this case. How intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, one of only two 
survivors. Uh, uh, give me, give me a second here. My computer seems to want to uh, shut off the display monitor for some reason. So, give me, give me just a second. I, I'm sorry, people. I, I don't know why it does that whenever I try to record with Fraps. Okay, that that should that should do it. I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials. Okay, so we've examined that. What else? What else can we examine? By the way, this is just like the Super Nintendo thing where I got to control it with the D-pad. A file cabinet. Patient's records are stored here. What's this? There's a memo stuck between the pages. Jeez, I'm glad they are giving me plenty of time to read this shit. Hmm, there is a faint smell of ammonia. That's it? Okay, well, let's examine the desk here. A giant pair of scissors is on the desk. They are a replica of the scissors used by the murderer. In the clock tower case. These are the weapons he used to slash up his victims. Can I get in the desk here at all? No? Well, can, do I have a menu? Uh, how do I, well, what's, how do I access hint number one, then? Oh, well. Let's leave. My laboratory. Lately, I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff is still here. Okay, well, let's see what we can, uh... Oh, what is this? A statue. It is cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. I swear, if that's that fucking demon statue thing I had to get, it's gonna be bullshit. Professor... Helen left a few minutes ago, and she looked really angry. Hmm. That's all I gotta say is, huh. Well, I guess I was kind of a... Look at this fucking creepy-ass mask right there! Why would you have that? That's so creepy! A stuffed animal. Looks like a prize won at a fair. Well, what's, what's this? It is Harris's desk. Clipped out articles of Clock Tower story are scattered about. Seems Harris has gone somewhere. Okay, well let's examine this creepy ass mask. So there's a man's rubber mask, a kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be very fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Now, you see, my problem with this is it looks like the cursor is a little bit above the mask there. And a little bit below the, uh, oh wait, no, maybe this is a completely different thing. Oh yeah, that's completely different, okay. Helen's desk. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that's pretty much spot on the bear there. Okay, let's talk to this douchebag here. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? Well, I guess not. <laughs> can I access the filing? Okay, I cannot access the filing cabinet. This is really awkward, having to do this. There's still something I need to do in here. And what would that be? Maybe this? Harris's desk. Seems Harris has gone somewhere. Maybe this one? Oh, 
Oh my word, I can't believe I'm stuck in the very first area. Come on. Uh, found at the scene of the murders. Seems to be hiding some sort of secret. Okay, well maybe I missed something over here. No, maybe something in the office? And what would that be? Tell me! Maybe I gotta talk to her. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. They always cut off and leave one word down there. Uh, yes, yes, you're right. You're a total douche, but you're right. Okay, now can I leave? Oh, my word. Do I have to talk to her again? Again? Seriously? I wish I had a cute kid sister. A cute kid brother would be okay too. Okay, is that it? Is that all there is? She doesn't have any more dialogue. Oh my word, I'm, I'm gonna fucking murder you. Do you have anything? It's both clock tower murders, isn't it? <laughs> I guess they want to sensationalize this scissor man who really doesn't even exist. Scissor man. It'd be cool if he were real. Huh? Uh, just, just a joke. Just a joke. I, I don't want serial murderers to be real. You shouldn't keep the reporter waiting too long. Well, I'm trying to fucking get to him. Oh, finally. Oh, jeez. Can I X? Okay, I cannot access the map. Oh, I cannot go left. I can only go to the right. Oh, Professor Harris. A, news a newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. Oh, what was that? I just heard something. It seems like they've gotten rid of the shoulder buttons double run thing. Which, that's kind of sad. Okay, there's... Okay, I cannot go through the door. Select the damn thing! Now walk into a black void where you seem to be able to levitate. <laughs> oh, I can go up to the third floor. There's no reason to go to the third floor. I hate to waste time. Yeah, well, I love to waste time. You obviously haven't seen some of my videos where I get fucking stuck. Was that it? Y you can't even exit the thing automatically for me? Oh, Professor! I am the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell. And this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. Oh my word, there's no indicator on which one I... Or when I have control. Then I'll get right to the point. What are you even doing, Tim? Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I mean, he doesn't even have a camera or anything. I can't say anything for sure yet because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh? Do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? 
Oh, uh, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. I'm over. There's no indication. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you're going to say. That monster she was talking about, the Scissor Man, and whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That is what our readers want to know. Because the existence of this scissor man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalized the whole thing. Ah, that hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you're right. Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. There is, there is something I must be attending to. Oh, well, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as helpful, couldn't be as much help as you would like. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murders. He is supposed to be a young boy about 10 years old. What? Wait, when was there... The only ones that survived with... Because I, I remember specifically doing the S ending was Jennifer and one of her friends. Oh, damn it. I meant, I meant to do too. But, I mean... What 10-year-old boy? Alright, what, what do we got here? Can I... Okay, I cannot go to the right still. Oh, okay, so circle actually stops it, stops a dead run. That's good. Okay. Oh, who are you? Prof Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. Well, let us just go right on over. Well, it looks like I'm not allowed to run in the office. The oh, you motherfucker! Okay, let's talk to him. Is there something I can do for you? Maybe... Like, can I grab this? Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. Wait, what? Butler! I don't remember no butler. Alright, I'll ask Harris to show it to Rick. Harris, would you take this statue and show it to a man named Rick? Is that the statue that was at the scene of the uh, murders? Yes, it is. Would you ask him if he knows anything about it? Yes, I'll go and ask him on my way home this evening. Very good, thank you. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy room. Alright, let's go see what it, what we got. Let's see this ten-year-old boy that I know that I don't remember at all. <laughs> Alright, 
Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? Arigato gozaimashite. I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I am Edward's guardian. Edward? I thought he completely lost all his memory from the shock. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very... difficult. Psh, silent. Now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward. Now, I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened. Uh, yes. Well then, let's get started. Now, loading. Yes, let's, let's do data save. Checking memory card. Okay, let's just save over data one. I really like that picture in the background there. That's actually a really cool background. And with that, I am ending the very first part of Clock Tower. So I will see you all later. Arigato gozaimashita and goodbye.